you're watching the free version of this tutorial. Upgrade to premium for all footage and project and exclusive content. Exercise 13 carries on from exercise 12, where we were looking at the camera solve module. In this exercise, we're gonna be taking a look at the other type of camera solve we can do, and that is for parallax camera solves. So let's watch our clip back, and we have a moving camera this time, moving through this uh, graffitied space. Now, unlike a pan, tilt, and zoom shot, where we only needed one plane to generate up enough data to get our camera. With a parallax camera, we need at least two. And we're looking for two non-coplanar elements. If I take, for example, this first pillar here, and I'll turn my perspective on on the track as well. What I want to do now is find another non-coplanar area. And for this, I'm gonna take the ground. Now, a big mistake to make when we're doing camera solves is to make a large shape like this that has a lot of different depths in it. This sort of shape would be absolutely fine if we were just doing straightforward planar tracking to insert something in the middle there. This just takes in and describes far too many depths for it to be really useful for the camera solve. So what we'll do instead is we'll make this a lot narrower. We can take the same basic plane of the ground here, but it describes a much smaller depth. Okay, turn perspective on on that as well. And let's track these two through to begin with. And we can quickly see we're gonna have trouble with our pillar. Let's rename these actually. Let's call this one front pillar track. And this one, we will call this one ground track. Yeah, the problem we're gonna have with a front pillar is that it's gonna go out soon. Actually, very soon. We'll probably keep that one as the last frame. So when that happens, we still need to have at least two non-coplanar tracks. So let's make another one. And just as we did with the pan, tilt, and zoom one, we have to have some overlap. So at least 10 frames overlap. And let's track. We could track this pillar here. And we'll set our in point. And we'll set perspective on. Yeah, it's not coplanar, but it won't give us a lot of parallax. So what we could do as well is maybe just add another one in the background here. We'll rename this one. We'll call this one back wall track. And this one would be mid pillar track. I know we've already tracked the next 10 frames of these two but that's fine, we'll just retrack that with these other ones involved as well. It's not gonna to be too much of a hardship. Okay, and we got a tracking terminated prematurely, and the reason for that is because our second pillar has also gone out of frame here. So let's put the out point there and track the rest of this forward. Cool, the only thing we need to do now is just track the last little bit of that back wall. Might as well have a bit more information there. Now we've got it. Then we'll turn the process off on all the other uh, layers apart from back wall and just track that one backwards. Okay, so now we've got all of our tracks. Let's go to the camera solve. And then we'll just go up into the layer controls and check that all of the layers that we want to use as part of the solve have their process cog turned on. And we want to use all of them come down to our camera solve module and the parameters and under the camera we've got our auto pan tilt and zoom small parallax change and large parallax change now the small parallax change would be where you don't have a lot of depth available to you so there's there's not going to be a lot of parallax actually happening in the shot so let's see what mocha can make of this shot here with the small parallax change Not great, I actually can't find one on that. So let's leave everything exactly the same and just go to large parallax change. 
and our solve quality is 98. Now, when you do get these two confused, sometimes the solve won't even fail. It'll just give you a very low solve quality result. So that's something else to look out for. Let's export our camera data now and see what we get. Again, we'll take this out to After Effects, 3D motion data, copy that to the clipboard, save and exit, and come up to the edit and paste our Mocha camera. And let's scrub through here quickly. Actually, let's turn off our graphic for a second and scrub through here quickly. Just to see if anything's uh, standing out as being particularly bad or particularly floaty. No, everything's looking pretty good. All the nulls are staying in the right place. One of the little tricks I like to do if I uh, am working with multiple nulls is I like to color code all of these separately. So I'll take all five nulls associated with each layer and give them a different color. So it makes it easier to see what's what. And often once I've confirmed that everything's looking right with these layers, I don't actually need to have five nulls for each of these depths. I can get away with just having one of them because they're all going to be sat in the same basic Z plane. So I'll choose the one that is in the appropriate depth for what I want to do and get rid of the others. There we go. And just to test that these are working, I've got a little graphic here. Let's send this into 3D and make three duplicates of it with Control or Command D. Open up the position on each one of these of our nulls and go copy, paste, Control C, Control V, or Command C, Command V on the Mac. There we go. Now I've pasted the data out of that. I can turn on my Shy Guy and just hide those so we don't have to have them sort of cluttering everything up. Move these in time. And just do a quick RAM preview. Yep, and those are all fitting in nicely. So again, from our plane of tracking data, we've created a 3D camera solve. And as you can now tell, the process for doing that in Mocha is rather straightforward. Things you have to remember, don't make a shape which uh, includes too much depth. You want things that are fairly narrow in depth. If you have large parallax, a good idea is to try and stagger some of the shapes in depth as well to aid that parallax solve. If you don't have a lot of depth, then just get non coplanar surfaces. So a wall or two walls and a floor. I remember a minimum of two non coplanar shapes being tracked at any time. And you have to stop tracking a shape. Make sure that you have at least 10 frames overlap before you turn it off. And this is the end of the free version of Getting Started with Mocha. If you want to carry on with some more Curious Turtle tutorials, then take a look at either the premium version of this course, which includes new exercises and all the footage and project files that you need to work along with the course. Or take a look at some of the other Mocha courses on CuriousTurtle.com or on the Imagineer Systems website. My name is Ben Brownlee from Curious Turtle. Thanks very much for joining me throughout this course. And here's a quick overview of what we'll be looking at in the next exercise in the premium version. The next two exercises are going to be very different than what we've seen up till now, because what I'm aiming to do is put a lot of this learning all together. So we'll be taking a look at some practical projects that put multiple things together rather than focusing on one area separately. So basically putting all of the knowledge we've learned into practice now and learning some extra tricks and features while we're doing it. And we'll see the first project in exercise 14.